What if I told you future of engineering isn't about coding at all? AI job. AI jobs. Artificial intelligence. If ChatGPT is writing entire applications and AI is solving problems in seconds that used to take hours, does that mean coding is dead? Coding. AI coding. AI first coding. Coding. Or are we actually shifting towards a new kind of a builder? If engineers aren't coding, what will they do? And will AI take over our jobs? That's what I want to unpack in this video. But first, thanks to Wart for sponsoring this video, more on them later. If you're new here, I'm Jean. I was an early engineer at WhatsApp and an engineering manager at Meta. I've been in tech for 20 years and here's what I can tell you from experience. The more senior a programmer becomes, less time they actually spend on coding. For senior developers, writing code is only about 10 to 20 percent of what they actually do. The other 80 to 90 percent is mostly communication. Think about it. Before you write a single line of code, what are you actually doing? You're asking what problem are we solving and how? Only then you can translate those plans into code. Our work involves distilling complex problems, brainstorming solutions, planning implementation, sharing ideas with teams, testing and verifying results, long-term maintenance and improvements. All of this is structured communication. As AI gets better at writing code, this communication part becomes even more important. If you've worked in industry, you've seen what's called specifications or specs. These are like the blueprints for software systems. You don't just jump straight into code. You write down exactly what you want to happen, why it matters, and how you'll know if it worked. Traditionally, specs were shared mainly with other human beings, engineers, PMs, designers, legal, and even leadership. Here's an example I found on OpenAI's model spec. It captures the intentions for how how their AI model should behave, all written in natural language so anyone can read and contribute to it. Typically, a good spec has enough information so that engineers can use to generate high quality code. And this can be in any language like Python or TypeScript. But now that we're working with AI tools, those same specs can also be repurposed as prompts. The clearer and more detailed your spec, the better the output. Now, if you want to learn more about how you can actually write a good technical spec, subscribe to my newsletter. I'll do a deeper dive into the technicality of writing a spec. But for this video, let's say you have a good spec. Then what happens next? You could always go with the old school hands-on coding, but nowadays there are so many AI tools available. You're probably familiar with two types of AI coding tools. One is bi-coding tools like Lovable and Bolt. These are no-code style platforms, so even if you don't have any technical background, anyone can use them. They're really good for quick prototypes like MVPs for startups or personal projects. And in fact, I use Lovable all the time for my side projects when I want to build something simple and test it out quickly. But when it comes to production code on complex systems, you may run into some issues. That's why you might opt for coding assistant tools like Cursor or Cloud Code. These are designed for professional engineers with technical background. And the difference is that you can develop complex full stack development and have more control over it. Now, Vibe coding tools might replace some contract work like building basic websites, whereas coding assistance can be used to amplify professional software engineers. Speaking of powerful AI tools, let's talk about Warp. Warp is designed to empower engineers to embrace the future of software development, a future where coding by prompt, not by hand, will be the norm. With their new release, Warp is the place where IDE and CLI merge into one seamless environment for coding with AI agents. Here's what that means in practice. Warp combines three things into one. You start with a natural language prompt to describe what you want to build. Warp generates the code, and you can jump directly into the built-in editor for review and tweaks. Then you deploy to production directly from the built-in terminal. All of this in one single workflow. Now you might think this sounds like cursor or cloud code, but there's a difference. Cursor is an AI IDE and Claude is more of a CLI tool. Warp bridges both worlds. It works across full development cycle, manages multiple long running agents seamlessly and has native in-app editing so you don't have to constantly context switch between tools. And the performance backs it up. Warp ranks top five on SWE Bench Verified and number one on Terminal Bench, which means it's really good at coding and very performant. Warp is free to use and you can try their premium features for just $1 your first month with code Gene. Link is in the description.
Now back to the video. To understand where AI might take us in the future, I think it helps to look back at history. Take secretaries in the 80s. When word processor and email came out, everyone thought typing, note taking, and scheduling will all go away and so would the job. But what really happened? Most top CEOs still have executive assistants. The role didn't disappear completely, it evolved. Instead of just typing, now they handle coordination across teams. Instead of just taking notes, they manage multiple projects. Projects. Technology took over the repetitive tasks, but human beings who can handle complex problems are more valuable than ever. The same story is playing out with software engineering. Coding has never been about the whole job. Engineering is fundamentally about solving human problems. I remember back in 2007 when I was graduating from college, the hot topic was offshoring. Everyone said that coding jobs would go away because they're all going to move to India. But that never really happened. because. Great products don't come from treating engineers like a replaceable tool. They come from engineers who have ownership over the products and make technical decisions based on their experience. And that's why Silicon Valley has thrived. Today with AI, we are seeing a similar turning point. The future engineer will look less like a code typist and more like a mini CEO, someone who takes an idea from start to finish, someone who manages multiple full project life cycles, someone who directs AI tools instead of people. So what does this mean for you? It means we need a new way of thinking about work. It's not so much about job titles anymore, but it's more about what type of tasks you do at work. So ask these two questions. How exposed is this task to AI automation? And two, how much human judgment or strategic thinking does this task require? That gives us four categories. One is jobs like janitorial work that aren't easy for AI to do because it's so physical. These are safe from AI for now. There are also tasks like data entry that are more repetitive for AI to handle, and these jobs are going away fast. Third category is roles like leadership and strategy that are really valuable and hard for AI to replace. These are the most secure jobs because they depend on human thinking and judgment. And lastly, there are jobs like software engineering and data analysis. They are very high in value, but also easy for AI to help with because it's more structured. And these are changing quickly as AI becomes part of the workflow. So future isn't so much about learn to code or get left behind, but it's more about learn to think clearly and communicate effectively. So if you're thinking about staying ahead in the future, here's what you can work on. One, start using AI tools early. People who learn them first will have an advantage. And practice explaining your ideas clearly, like writing good prompts or specs. Also focus on the big picture, not just writing code, but understanding how everything fits together. And even if you're a junior engineer, you can practice by thinking about why is this project needed? How am I going to build this? And what is the best approach to solve this problem? And embrace uncertainty because we are in a really chaotic stage right now. And great engineers figure out what to build even when things aren't clear and things are changing. Finally, start telling your story. Share what makes you and how you think unique. And that's the part that AI can't replace. And if you're job hunting, Telling your story means highlighting the impact of your work and framing your experience in a way that employers and hiring managers would want to care about. I also have a book called The Ultimate Resume Handbook. It's a guide with all my best tips from working as a hiring manager at Meta. It's on my website, so go check it out. Now here's a challenge. Next time you're working on any project, it could be coding or something else, start with the specification. Write down what success would look like to you. And comment spec first if you're going to try this approach. And if you want to see more about the future of programming and how AI is reshaping tech careers, where I break down the skills that will matter most in the next decade, check out this video next and I'll see you there.